Hello, as usual it's me Pavlo and uh, today's video will be double useful for you. First of all, because while you will be watching this video, your hair will become uh, uh, softer and silky smooth. And also because we are talking about uh, interesting uh, recently released model by Odyssey named MM500. In this model Odyssey uh, concentrated their technologies uh, pursuing the goal of creating uh, studio monitor headphones with not the flagship price and at the same time targeting both uh, studio professionals and uh, those uh, people who like to listen music with maximum focus on neutrality and in monitoring way. I'm not a studio professional, so I can't evaluate this model in this aspect, but uh, I've heard a lot of headphones, so I can share my impressions and experience with MM500. Their price is $1,700, uh, uh, if I remember right, it's uh, slightly above uh, LCD2 and uh, below LCD3, uh, so it's like... Uh, positioned by Odyssey scale, probably it can be considered as a middle-range model uh, because there is, they have uh, much more expensive LCD4, LCD5 and many other models. But anyway, it's pretty expensive model by absolute scale, so let's consider that. And uh, as you can expect, uh, it comes in uh, pretty solid uh, black uh, case, uh, really protecting everything inside, so you definitely can transport your headphones everywhere you'd like uh, without any problems. Actually, it's one of the points uh, of Odyssey, like you can carry your studio headphones with you if you're working with, with sound on the go. Inside you'll get headphones themselves, of course, uh, stock cable, it's, uh, I don't know what is it, it's some kind of merchandise probably it's a demo unit so i won't unpack this and also manual warranty card and uh, other paper stuff like that so pretty basic accessory set but with a great case in terms of design they definitely looks uh, great it's like the combination of some familiar odyssey traits from many years uh, before and the uh, modern stuff they creating actually they reminds me uh, LCD5 by many aspects, like uh, for example headband and stuff. But here it's not uh, carbon, it's just uh, some metal and one of the most important parts of these headphones is the, this uh, leather part, because they are pretty heavy, a bit less than 500 grams and uh, uh, this uh, headband required for proper weight distribution which is does uh, pretty well, but still after a lot of hours of listening, I'm just feeling a bit of uh, uh, unpleasant uh, uh, sense uh, on the top of my head, so I move them a bit forward or backward, but in general for less than four hours listening session, they are pretty good. Also, they have a bit stronger than uh, usual clamping force, uh, thanks to the good ear pads for me, it was not uh, uncomfortable, but if you're sensitive to that, or if you have some uh, really big head, uh, probably it can be a bit of an issue for you, but uh, I've got no issues. They have a nice uh, uh, size adjustment schema with the scales and clicks, so, you know, I'm a bit of perfectionist, or person... Uh, with slight uh, uh, form of OCD, for me it's super important to have the equal uh, size on both sides of headphones. I don't know why, but uh, uh, but it uh, I always pay attention to that. So this uh, uh, yokes and uh, overall fitting sch uh, schema is uh, pretty nice for me. Really good uh, holding the size and so on. Uh, there are a lot of metal in the design, which I also like, and I like the, the color they've selected. Nice uh, tint of uh, metallic gray with uh, black accents. Really good uh, thing, looks like something really technological. Even you can see that 
uh, yoke's design for example looks also pretty modern and they have grills with signature a letter they have uh, nice soft ear pads actually not uh, as soft as uh, memory foam i don't know what is the feeling here uh, I'm trying to say that they are soft, but not the softest ones, but still with uh, good wearing comfort, both in terms of size and also in terms of uh, wearing. Of course, uh, I've got no issues with overheating, they are pretty open, so it's not the model for like uh, street wearing or for wearing somewhere in the office. Uh, but at the same time they're not super leaking because they have some uh, mesh material here but still it's uh, uh, audible what's going on outside and what they are playing but less than in uh, absolutely open models inside you can see some protective grill and actually underneath uh, probably uh, that shining part is the membrane itself here are cable connectors, uh, Odyssey are pretty consistent here, as usual it's a classical 4-pin uh, micro XLR, uh, if I remember right, actually they were the first uh, who introduced this standard and also they are like pretty successfully using it uh, up to nowadays, so one of the most sustainable standards in the audio world stock cable is also pretty decent i don't know about the materials they mentioned that like it's really good materials and really great cable for me more important of course is overall sound and ergonomics and thanks to odyssey they didn't make this cable in some kind of uh, fabric insulation so almost zero microphonic effect uh, pretty soft uh, really comfortable in wearing so nice uh, headphone cable here is a sp splitter it's also a bit uh, it's not super weighty but it has some weight to pull the cable down and help it stay in place and underneath it goes down to this really big 6.3 millimeter jack uh, not sure why they didn't uh, add the uh, pentagon here probably it's because they wanted to highlight studio orientation of these uh, headphones and like in studio they are pretty conservative guys so they use 6.3 often but if you want to connect them to some player which is all actually not a not a bad idea with powerful players you probably need to go looking for some third party cable with uh, pentagon so, in general, in terms of exterior, I'd say that everything is really good here, both as wearing comfort and stuff. And of course about the sound, I didn't burn them in, because it's a demo unit, so it's already past uh, all that uh, periods of time where it, uh, it could be considered uh, unburned. Also, I did all critical listening using stock cable, of course. But during experiments with uh, players, I used some sort of party cables like this one by Ukrainian Air in Ear. But of course, uh, I will describe the sound with this uh, stock cable because I always trying to describe the stock experience of every model. And uh, you know, still unsure about studio usage, but uh, like this model is pretty neutral, but uh, I won't call it monitoring, at least in my perception. Um, uh, probably they can be used for monitoring, and like I'm almost certain in that. But uh, in, my, in my perception, monitoring is, is something neutral, flat, and probably also with focus on the micro contrast. And actually it's not the case for this model, because it's uh, pretty musical. Not like, I don't know, old LCD2 or LCD3, and not like uh, some cheaper models with V-shaped signature, but still they are pretty enjoyable uh, to, uh, for regular mu music listening, and uh, they have a bit of accents here and there to make your experience more engaging. It's not like super colored, uh, but slight coloration is present here. But uh, probably they are natural in terms of our ear perception. So maybe it was the Odyssey point here. So 
not sure about studio, but uh, listen, mu listening music with them is really, really enjoyable. So, bass is slightly accented, it has really good punch and when necessary weight, uh, in terms of uh, pure uh, quantity, it's uh, slightly accented, but definitely not too much. So, it's not the, mod uh, the model for bass heads or for those who like uh, really warm sound, neither it's a model for those who like absolutely natural bass or focused on the super speed and the impact. It has uh, bass here has good, really good depth, but at the same time, lower parts of treble are not dominating in the mix, so it's not the model for those who need that crushing rumble instead of all low frequencies. But uh, resolution is really good, and that means great texturing, and that means good representation of uh, instrument's body, all that notes that goes to the lower uh, frequency area. And also I use them with electronic music to my taste it's absolutely enjoyable and I didn't miss uh, bass in terms of quantity or weight but of course it's all subjective. And the uh, first example it's uh, Navras by Juno Reactor, one of the, their most famous tracks and it starts with that ma massive uh, epic orchestra part with uh, Chor choral sing uh, chorus singing and a uh, lot of different instruments. It's powerful, epic, uh, and uh, then later music transitions to more typical Juno Reactor trance-like uh, uh, tune, but still with uh, inserts of uh, chorus and other things, and the uh, trance part has a nice noticeable bass line, not over-dominating, like it's typical for Juno Reactor, they are not uh, overdoing low frequencies, and I really like that. And this uh, headphones totally delivered all nuances and parts. Actually, one of their strong parts that I really like. They built a good uh, contrast of uh, uh, weight on the low frequencies and airness and expansion in the mids and treble area. It's usually really, really pleasant to hear, especially on tracks like that. And the uh, second example, it's a bit simplistic for these headphones, but anyway, pretty enjoyable track that I really like. It's Nathaniel Rateleaf and the Night Suites, and they have, in this track, I never, never get, I need never get old, they have nice, noticeable, big drum kicking, and that requires, like, uh, good bass and mids performance, and also flawless uh, bass to mids transitions, and definitely these headphones deliver that as well as vocal, guitar and other parts of this track too. Mid frequencies are also like balanced. It's not like, they're not trying to be super technical or like super resolving, but resolution is good. Uh, and uh, that means uh, realistic vocal and uh, instruments, but at the same time no, uh, no accent on the tiniest nuances and details. If you need like even more refined sound, it's a matter of uh, more expensive models, both by Odyssey or some other manufacturer. Instead, you're getting like good balance of uh, weight distribution and also slightly boosted dynamics and emotions, which is uh, pretty pleasant combined with uh, spacious stage. And they are good in building stage. It's uh, wider than deeper, but still, anyway, stage is, has a pretty viable size and uh, built really well, so you percept everything with uh, good positioning. They require nice uh, quality of tracks, but at the same time not uh, being over nitpicking here. It's not like that uh, type of sound where you need good, well-recorded tracks, because you will hear all the issues uh, and uh, headphones will highlight them. No, here you will hear all the issues, but headphones don't try to push them forward, but you'll need the good tracks just to push their limits and get the best of this uh, model. And Let's go for some examples. First one, it's uh, Pictures of a City by King Crimson. Really saturated track with a lot of different uh, instruments, with that uh, uh, slightly distorted guitars, really sophisticated guitar play, a lot of transitions and all that stuff requires nice and uh, technical uh, mids, but at the same time uh, 
uh, to my perception, uh, headphones for this track shouldn't be too monitoring, otherwise this uh, track just uh, fell into slices and instead of an uh, overall perception you start listening to separate instruments that doesn't sound as a whole. whole. These uh, headphones really pass this test without any issues, playing it in a really engaging way. And just another, it's not, not audiophilic track, but pretty engaging and enjoyable to listen in these headphones. Credence, Have You Ever Seen The Rain, absolute classics. It has a pretty pleasant bass, which these headphones play nicely. Signature vocal also sounds pretty well, as well as guitar part. And also a huge wave of nostalgia subjectively for me, because it was the first foreign rock uh, 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 artist that I've heard in the Soviet era, when I was really, really young. And uh, in terms of treble, like, uh, it's good, well-tuned planars, uh, nice extension, maybe not the maximum, but close to that. Uh, good balance of attacks and decays, not trying to be too sharp, but at the same time delivering you nice amount of uh, that overtones, both basic and more complex, with uh, uh, good layering. Actually, if you don't compare them to some top-of-the-line headphones, layering is great. And only in, uh, by comparison you can uh, like uh, uh, get an impression of what superb layering sounds like. So, nice balance, they are not trying to be super energetic in treble, but slight hint of energy is present here. But, to my taste, not too much, so it's like, uh, in terms of quantity of treble, it will fit many tastes, uh, as well as in terms of quality, of course. And that means, like, uh, more timber-rich instruments, more airness, more sense of the audience where, or room where it was recorded, and actually that leads us to uh, this uh, example track. I really like Arne Domnerus, I often use uh, his jazz at the pawn shop, but uh, I have, have another album in my collection, it's uh, a cooperation between, between Arne Domnerus with saxophone and uh, Jan Sjokvist, uh, pro, oh, sorry, Gustav Sjokvist, uh, uh, playing uh, organ and it recorded in uh, some church in Sweden. Actually, it's written here, but it's hard to uh, read what actually the church was and not sure if that important, but it's really great record in terms of uh, quality, really good sense of that church, of the big hall and like you're listening to really uh, rich saturated organ with tons of uh, that decays and reflections and the same applies to the uh, saxophone saxophone and uh, they blending together giving you great sense of uh, hole and space and stage and all stuff like that and this uh, headphones deliver it really well and another example like total classics it's uh, Vayner Philharmoniker and uh, Carlos Kleber and it's uh, uh, Beethoven's uh, Symphony Number no. 5 and that introduction, it's famous, everyone heard it and it's really good performance uh, thanks to Apple Music Classical for helping me to compare a lot of versions and find the ones that I like and uh, also it's uh, of course, nicely recorded, uh, but it's uh, typical for Deutsche Grammophon, like, you never uh, going wrong with Deutsche Grammophon. Uh, or maybe not, not often. And uh, all that instruments and fast parts, slow parts, that sense of uh, big orchestra and audience are all present here and these headphones deliver it really well. Speaking about the sources, they are all like uh, relatively efficient. Uh, they uh, Odyssey recommended uh, at minimum 100 milliwatts uh, or like uh, 
bad, best optimal is 250 milliwatts. So almost all modern desktop amplifiers will deliver that without any problems. And a lot of modern players also will give it too, so no issues uh, with uh, uh, pairings in terms of uh, power and in terms of uh, uh, source representation itself, it's like a matter of your choice. I prefer like uh, more or less balanced sources, like for example M17 with its uh, crazy dynamics really fitting into the sweet spot for me with these headphones, highlighting their own dynamic uh, in a noticeable way and sounding really pleasant. Speaking about the compressions, actually don't have uh, much to compare in this segment, uh, like uh, Mesa Lyric, uh, not a fair comparison, because Lyric are closed back, and this model builds a better stage. Actually, Lyric is not uh, that behind in terms of staging, but still here you'll get more openness and more airness. But actually, instead, the Lyric uh, has a bit more natural mids and uh, be slightly more technical in terms of uh, resolution, speed and stuff like that. And uh, I own Meze Empyrean and now Meze Elite, uh, but also don't think that like it's a fair comparison, because with that models you'll get also more resolution, more technical sound, better stage, but like it's for two times or even even two times in when we speak about uh, Empyrean and even more than that for the Elite, another not fair comparison. And compared to LCD3, like this one is more natural, less warm, so in general like more modern sound with less uh, Odyssey classical representation. Really nice engaging model, I think uh, they will get more sales and more popularity and based on feedback in the internet and reports like they are seems to be achieving that goal. Thank you for listening, thank you for your attention and of course have a great day.